Today I'm gonna show you a brand new map which was never seen before. And for that reason, sit please. Drink something because it might hit you like a truck. The name of the map is Fort Zavisen. On the right side we have the blue Gondor player Axe Cross. He is facing against the green Mordor player Vito. So it's a classical matchup between good and evil. And you know me now. This is my favorite matchup. You know, Gondor versus Isengard, Rohan versus Isengard, Gondor versus Mordor, and Rohan versus Mordor. I like the clash of good and evil just like in the films. And that's a very interesting strategy from the Mordor player, not gonna lie. He's actually sending both his orcs forward. That's very, very interesting. Maybe he was actually wall checking wrong. When you wall check wrong and actually you miss the fact that your opponent is a good faction player, in this case Gondor and Rohan, it might mess up your early game strategy big time. For that reason, look at that. The orcs, they have to now walk all the way back to the settlement, which might be a little bit too late. And I believe the mill is going to be, unfortunately for the Mordor player, Vito taken down. And in the worst case scenario, the Gondor player can use heal to make sure that he has the DPS and the sustain he needs to be able to destroy the mill. And I think that's going to be the plan. I mean, not even needed. The mill is going down definitely. There is nothing the Mordor player can do. And that's like one of the uh, tough starts for the Mordor. If you lose your mill while the soldiers are still healthy. Because now a lot of time has to be invested to deal with them. Which will delay your creeping. Which will delay to you to reach the mid game. In which you might shine bright like a diamond. Because Mordor in battle for middle of one is a hard skilling faction. So the longer you survive, the more stronger you will get. You will get the chance to recruit two Nazgûls and the Witch King of Engmar. Which is crazy. Like three flying heroes around. It's really hard to deal with that for any faction. Rohan, Isengard, but also Gondor. So a great one here from the Mordor player. He's gonna use the Hobbit. Or not the Hobbit, right? <laughs> Sorry. It's like a... You know, Gollum is kind of like a Hobbit, right? Smeagol, at least. So he's gonna lure the Wargs away with the Gollum. And creep that with the Orcs. With the Eye of Sauron. They are almost level 3. They also got the money. I believe they won't be able to finish the Wargs. But it's fine. The goal from Mordor is not to get the outpost early on. It's about to get the creep. But most importantly, get the treasure. Get the money. Hobbit is kiting. Hitting and running. In the meantime, we have a Steeple coming up. And Gondor player, I believe, he was kind of scared of a potential uh, gate rush. <laughs> which is, you know, Mordor could gate rush you, obviously. But the, if you don't know, the Gondor Citadel is the only one in the entire game that can also shoot. So... Getting one orc inside is not going to do a lot for Mordor. So looks like you want to creep this second one. But this creep might not work out. Because the Hobbit is disturbing. And also the Vargs are actually focusing down the orcs. Going to be close one. I believe Gondor player will be able to deny him the creep. And he was even able to get cloaked with the Hobbit. So he's trying hard to focus on the Leia. Um, maybe imagine Pippin actually getting the last hit. Or we will see about that. Who will get the last hit here? Now, now, throw. Oh, no, actually, Mordor got the last hit. That's massive, because now he has even collected the money, too. I mean, the Gondor player, rather than trying to kill the Oryx, I believe he should be trying to actually uh, take down the Lair. But it's okay. So he has one power point collected now. Because of the money he was getting from both the Lairs, he was actually able to fill up his space with slaughterhouses already. Like, imagine having a rough start like that by, use, by losing one of your settlements early on. But then... Still being able to creep two layers and get a full beast. He was even able to creep the third layer. That's pretty impressive. Now the first Gondonite is finally on the field. That means the mill at the bottom left side will be definitely taken down. It's going down. There is no defense. And you know, I don't like this strategy at all from the modder player. You know, you might be asking, but why not? Because that's not proactive, you know. This is gonna kind of force you in long terms to be in a turtle situation you have nothing you can fight with for the map control beside orcs obviously and they will be taking a lot of time to be able to destroy the farms that's why i personally like the haradrim palace which you can use to get the haradrims by the outpost put them on top of the outpost for a defense and then get actually soldiers of rune recruited from the haradrim palace level 2 they are acting like an Isengard pikeman unit and they are always able to win the 1v1 situation against the gondonites with them you can actually pressure the map a little bit because map control is the key to victory. So Gondor is creeping at the very same time. Mordor is actually creeping so many layers. That's crazy. Guys, that's, that's actually awesome. So from... There are... If you don't know, on the map Forts of Isen, you have in total six work layers, right? And Mordor was able to creep the bottom left one. This one. 
this one and this one so four out of six got secured by the mortal player bet which is pretty impressive now for that reason he has almost the power points he needs to get the industry from the spell book unlocked which will grant you additional 100 percent more resources from the selected slaughterhouses and you can select three of them at the same time so the first mountain troll is finally arrived that's good with him you can easily protect your settlements outside against the gondonites in the meantime gondor has a full base uh, stable he has two gondonites upon the field uh, three are required to get the stable to level two which will give you the chance to capture or purchase rather the night shield for more durability for the gondonites against arrows but in this matchup normally as gondor you want to either rush uh, the blades and um, you know shields and go for a base rush which is a risky strategy other than that you have the choice to save up for gandalf and i believe that's the goal from the gondor player but since he wasn't able to creep many many layers he has not even the power points collected yet to turn gandalf the gray into the gandalf the white but he's able to fight for the map control at you know at least for now but the second more throws are arriving it's going to be more and more challenging for the gondor player to contest the golem is scouting and he's gonna actually demolish four of the structures to build statues and the reason is simple the statue is giving you the hero bonus four of them are gonna dis you know make a discount of 30 percent which is quite a lot for an expensive hero like gandalf who normally costs six thousand with the four statues he will actually cost only four thousand and two hundred and i believe he will get the power points he needs like he needs not a lot killing a couple of orcs should do the magic trick so no problemo and Troll Cage is all about to hit level 2 after this mountain troll is arriving on the field. That will give Vito, the Mordor player, the chance to get some drummer trolls recruited. I mean, it's pretty close, but he will definitely do it. He will definitely do it. All he needs to do is kill those Oryx and Gandalf will be Gandalf the White. There we go, finally. And that's what I was trying to say earlier, because what's gonna happen when Gandalf comes? those trolls they are kind of forced to disengage they need to go into their own castle which means in long terms you will be losing the entire map control gondor with all the settlements outside is going to be able to get all the units he needs what i personally like a lot when i play gondor in a situation like that is building a marketplace so he gets faramir and also gandalf on the field at the same time beautiful trample is incoming I mean, orcs, <laughs> what can they do against such a reckless seed? We improved the smithy. <laughs> the Swaramir is actually chasing Gollum to show his quality. Like, Gollum can't be chased by Faramir. Faramir is way too slow to catch Gollum. As long as Gollum keeps running away, there is no world in which Faramir could ever reach out to him. So, Gollum just needs to keep running. That's all he needs to do. And ladies and gentlemen, we have, to, we have the Gandalf. We have Gandalf the White finally on the field. That's dope. And that's what I'm saying. Now Mordor was forced to send all the trolls back to the castle. Which is of course good. He's a yeah, smart move. Did you see what he did? He was beating the Israelite, forcing the Mordor player to demolish the tower. If he doesn't, he will give experience to Gandalf and also a lot of power points to... You see? You see what he's doing? That's very smart. I like that. I really do those are the small things which are actually separating a good player and a great player those small micro moves from the from gandalf from any hero from any ability you know look how much he's canceling it right before gandalf gets it done he's canceling it now he's gonna use it the thing is with the drummer being around this troll is not gonna get one shotted so lightning sword will be used can he hit it no, he has to go. Oh, he was actually able to kill one of the trolls. That's good. And even baiting off the Eye of Sauron and then getting in safety without having to use the heal. That's a win-win situation in my book. Nice play there from Gandalf. Very well executed. So, and that's the problem now what we have for the Mordor player Vito. So, Vito is kind of in a really rough situation. He has four trolls, yes. And he has one single drama troll. Great but he needs the witch king and he also needs the darkness to be able to fight to do to be able to do anything but since the map control is under control from the gondor player he will get the chance now to capture all these outposts build archer range get some gondor archers make the transition into the rangers and then you know get more of them on the field eventually you know once again i would personally prefer the marketplace when you have this many settlements outside you will grow rich you should never have any more money problem 
So he's trying to pressure, which is just gonna buy you some time. Okay, beautiful Easter Light once again. Gandalf is a sniper, boys. Like, Gandalf, once again, is the best hero in battle for Middle Earth. I mean, ob obviously, also the most expensive hero because you need to invest 6,000 and then two power points after that to turn him into the Gandalf the White. Because as Grey, he is not very useful. Trust me on that one. We've expanded the troll okay, Troll Kitch is level 3. Um, you need a second Drama Troll. The drama Trolls are able to give leadership to each other. Then they won't uh, die also very quickly. Because they will have 50% more armor from each other. So, you know. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good for Mordor in this situation. Farami is also on the field. Farami is wanting arrow. is dealing great amount of damage to the Trolls and also to the Nazgul. Not to the Witch King though. Witch King is much more resistant to the something like that. Uh, shields purchased, blades purchased, and heavy armor purchased. So every upgrade which is required besides fire is purchased. Be careful. Okay, uh, didn't die. Gandalf needs to be careful though. The trolls are not gonna... Oh, he might lose a full battalion of Gondonites. That's gonna be close. Uh, one was able to survive. Can he actually save him? I think he lost one of them, right? Yeah, he lost one of them. Now here's the second one here. Where is the third one? Yeah, he lost definitely one of them. Because he has to have three for the for the stable to be level two, right? So he lost a full Gondonite. That that hurts. Like you need to invest 560 now, but it was more expensive since he had not this many farms outside in the first place. Uh, 560 now, and then also lots of money for the upgrades. 360 each for blades, armor, and spanner, and I believe 240 for the night shields. So lots of money has to be invested. Watch this: 360, 360, and 240. Plus 560 for the Gondonite. So it's a lot of money. He's committing now, Faramir. <laughs> That's very smart from Mordor. You want to make sure that the, that the trolls you use to chase a hero who's on foot don't have trees. When they have trees, they won't get the chance to hit the, mount, uh, hit the dismounted or the hero on foot. The reason is simple, because they will charge and they have the auto attack animation. So by the time they swing the tree... The hero will be able to keep moving and your hit is going to miss. That's why when it comes to catch or chase heroes on foot, the trolls with no weapons, no stone and no trees are the best choice. Gandalf is doing his thing, he's being annoying and uh, the settlement has been you know, captured but it's not gonna last for a while and Gondor should be able to destroy it right off the bat. He's spamming lots of trolls. So he has in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 trolls and 2 drama trolls. But trolls need love. And with love, I mean insane amount of leadership bonuses. The reason why he needs so many trolls is simple. Because if you want to make a move, if you want to you know, move out of your castle to actually go for the attack, you also need an army and a couple of trolls and a drama troll inside your own castle, which is an open base. Is there light? But this troll can now eat one of the orcs, and you know, yummy, yummy, yummy. You are back to full HP. The Gandalf is trying to show his quality, but be careful. Oh, the Gondonites were actually trapped. It was close. And look at this now. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Hum, hum, hum. And there we go. Back to full HP. That's what I like to see. So three trolls. One of them is level two. Two of them are actually level two or higher. And uh, one drama troll are now deciding to fight for the map control. The game-breaking point in this matchup are definitely the Eagles. So, in order to be able to counter the Eagles, Mordor has to eventually go for the combos. You know, the Orc Arches and Orc Warriors combination with Fire Arrow and eventually even the Banner, which will cost you lots of money because the only way you can get the discount on the Fire Arrows and Banner is by building Blacksmiths. But uh, they are worse for anything else. So, Mordor needs Lord of Houses bonus, the food bonus, to get the trolls cheaper otherwise those trolls they will cost 1200 each they are already expensive mordor has not that much money does he have nazgul coming nope he keeps spamming trolls all the time but i personally prefer the quality over quantity i would rather have like four less trolls but the trolls i have would have the insane amount of damage and armor leadership and then you have also a hero who is a flyer uh, you know on a fiel beast and then you can use them to catch Gondonites, pressure Gandalf, pressure farms. So Mordor has to now make a move. Mordor has to make a move. Can he defend himself with that what he got? It's a huge Gondor army with lots of rangers and Gondor archers and Gondonites and Farami and Bogandalf. So it's going to be Fiesta.
yeah you see against the power of mordor there can be no victory uh, if you don't know uh, if you are in the melee range with the rangers they are actually switching to swords and they are able to knock down the enemy units that also includes the trolls by the way trolls can also be knocked down by the rangers you see that you see what he did to the ranger he's throwing the sword you see that you see what the rangers are doing that's why they are so great against trolls because even if they should get you know get closer the trolls they should be able to get to the rangers rangers can still disable them for multiple times so mordor was able to defend himself true he was also i believe able to kill faramir yes faramir has been taken down but the problem here is for mordor player he has not the same sustain in the economy unlike the gondor player has so gondor is able to afford to revive all the units and heroes he's losing but we cannot say the same about the mordor player but he's actually oh my goodness very smart move okay he's going for a beast raid and this place from gondor is wide open darkness has been used for additional 33 percent more damage and armor that's going to be hard to defend because these trolls have also drama troll support the trolls are charging in they are gonna focus down the, the citadel towers are building up but they have right now so much increased armor that these towers without laser without from the, the upgrade from the stonewalker will actually need ages to be able to kill those trolls Troll, uh, the stable level 3 is going down just avoid this side and focus this side and gondor has to make a move now with the rangers he has lots of rangers being idle they are doing nothing oh but beautiful easter light on your face son they were clumped and easter light has splash damage means it will be able to hit multiple units at the same time he's able to catch the drummer troll drummer troll is fully tanking um the lightning sword now he's one hit away drama troll is extremely important to be kept alive gandalf be careful though drama troll unlike the mountain trolls cannot eat anything to regenerate all gandalf needs is one single hit and that's gonna make those trolls now extremely vulnerable against arrows look how all of a sudden they start taking lots of more damage but dude regardless what will happen mordor was actually able to deal insane amount of damage to the gondor fortress like he destroyed all the valuable level 2 level 3 buildings and you cannot replace them only time can replace them and that will hurt like investing now 2000 to re you know to rebuild the wall and lots of resources to actually rebuild the structures you have lost that's gonna hurt and also this oh my that's so unlucky two blacksmiths is only remaining inside the big castle of gondor Holy quackamole. And that was also able to buy so much time to Mordor. But yet he keeps spamming trolls all the time. These are trolls, ladies and gentlemen. The mountain trolls. The outpost will be found and will be taken down. There is obviously no defense. And I mean, obviously Mordor is trying to actually get some more time, you know? That's all the plan from Mordor. We will get some more drama trolls very soon. Two of them are required to make them each other stronger. And Gondor is just leaving too much time to Mordor. Like when you deal damage, what you can do is because you have such a huge advantage. I mean, you had, I don't know if you still have, but then split them up a little bit. You know, you don't want to be clumped against trolls. But I'm trying to see if there is like place one ranger here, one here, one here, one behind. So if he charges to this battalion, you have one battalion behind the battalion that can shoot the troll engaging on the first battalion. I hope I am explaining that kind of the way I am intending to. But if you don't understand, let me know in the comment section down below. Splitting is the key to victory. Don't be grouped like that. When you group like this, the trolls are having the splash damage, especially with the tree in their hands. They will be able to crush your rangers in a in a large area that's why splitting them up, uh, up a little bit is extremely important now we have also combos for mordor he has fire or purchase banner purchase uh, darkness is almost back up gondor has still uh, more than three power points he's three more than three power points away from getting the eagle summon unlocked and that's a lot like uh, to get eagles won't be that useful anymore because there are combos with this much leadership the combos can one shot the eagles you know with the drummer darkness and eye of sauron late on hopefully also the witch king of Engma. but looks like mordor has no money like that's the struggle mordor has maybe go for a scavenger maybe not because going for a scavenger is gonna be good at the first place 
but it will also delay your Badrock summon. In this matchup, as evil factions Mortar or Isengard, you want to get to the Badrock summon as soon as possible, because that's the game winning point. Gandalf is looking for a chance, but it's too risky to get close to the trolls. Like one hit of each, this, each of these trolls, they will be one-shotting your Gandalf. Orc pit has to be rebuilt. And Gondor is too scared. Like the rangers have a passive. They are able to get stealthed around the tree. So maybe you can place them around the forest a little bit. And shoot and run. They are also quite mobile. Not as mobile as trolls when they are charging. But then you can actually uh, set up a trap, you know. Like again, like I said. Put one here, one here, one here. Split them up. So trolls have to be splitted. Then your Gandalf can also catch some of them off guard. Mordor is focusing down the map control. Industry has been used I don't know how many times already. Uh, Mordor is struggling. He needs eventually more combos, but he has not the money he needs. Gondor is coming now from this side. Um, he was also able to rebuy everything inside the castle, but you can see, that's what I'm saying, you know. The blacksmiths, they need ages to hit level 2. And level 2 gives you more money. Level 3 gives you more money. Somebody help me! Somebody help me! Okay, Gandalf should be fine. He has heal from the spellbook in the worst case scenario. So Mordor doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I would also not know what to do in a situation like that. Because if you go aggressive, there is a threat on your castle, and you might lose a lot to Gandalf and his Gondonites. If you go if you not play aggressive, Gondor will get more and more units. Eventually, some trebuchet from the workshop. They will hit like a truck, regardless how much leadership you got. And you will eventually get out sustained because Gondor is much greater eco than you do. So it's, a, it's like a very tricky situation. Can you camp to win this? That's the question. You now, can you camp long enough to get the Balrog summon unlocked? And then you summon Balrog, crash the enemy castle, and then use your army to crash the outpost and get the victory this way? These are many questions, and the answer lies in front of us. Gondor wasn't even able to get this outpost for whatever reason. Get this outpost. Like, you have so much money and so much value, you can even build the Stoneworker or the Marketplace. Uh, both would be a great choice, Let's and just there is no reason to not do. Because your command points cap means you cannot recruit any more units. The money you have collected in the bank is useless when you're not invested. And Boromir, by the way, Boromir is MVP in a situation like that. Boromir is able to knock down the trolls on the ground as well. Gandalf has to cancel the lightning sword. One troll has been slain. And when you escape from trolls like that, the shield bubble will activate, will pretty much negate all the incoming damage. Which is pretty nice. So two power points away from the eagles. That's pretty, pretty important. Then all you need to do is go for a juicy Visa Blast with Gandalf. Use Elvin Wood Visa Blast to one-shot them. Because Elvin Wood, as you know, is able to negate all the leadership bonuses they get. So they will not have the 50% armor from the Drama Troll. Not the additional armor from the Darkness. Or Witch King later on. That means they will be one-shotted from the Gandalf, Gandalf Visa Blast. So... Then the combos are gone. You have no problem anymore to summon the eagles. Summon the eagles, kill the trolls. Sounds easy, but it's not that easy to, you know, execute. Alright, so this is going to be... I don't know what they are waiting for. Yeah, he's finally making a move. So he has two trebuchet. Um, nah, four trebuchet at least. He has firestone purchase, so... But I don't like to, you know, I don't like the clumping. Like, all these units are clumped, you know? Just like too much clumping. That's not a good sign. Because Mordor has so many trolls. Like, four trolls are gonna smash all your army if you clump up like this. In the meantime, Mordor still... I mean, all game. Like, that's a very interesting gameplay from Mordor. Normally, Mordor players like to actually save up for a Nazgul or a Witch King. But this Mordor didn't even have the intention to get a Nazgul or the Witch King on the field. Very weird. So the siege has begun. And once again, splitting up even more would be great. That's what I like to see. Put one here. Put one here. You know, the positioning here is okay. Because even if you lose, you need to try to deal as much damage as possible in return. You need to kill as many trolls as you can. That's very important. Boom! That's a nice shot. He killed combos and knocked down the drama troll. The, the charge is incoming. What are those trebuchet doing? Can somebody explain me? Okay, hits, boom. You see the damage they are dealing to the to the trolls. Okay, darkness effect actually looks like they are healing, but they are not healing. It's like a visual effect, but they are definitely not healing. I can guarantee you that. 
Trolls are charging in. Fiesta is happening. One troll has been taken down. The other one has been taken down. This one is quite low as well. But these trolls, poor Farami. Dude, the poor Farami. I don't know what to say. Farami is being slain every single time. And from this fight all alone, Mordor was able to collect a lot of power points. And the Eagles, the Eagles are coming. Where are the combos at? There is one combo rotating now. The trolls are in a, in a bad spot. They might actually don't be grouped like this because the Eagles are also having splash damage, just like a Nazgul does. But watch this, boys. The combos, they will slaughter these eagles. And the Gandalf is coming in clutch. Gandalf, that's a risky move. Does he have heal from the spellbook? The answer is no. Gandalf, don't risk the biscuit. Run, run. Fly, Shadow Fang. Fly, Shadow Fang. Fly, run, 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 run. It's going to be close. Can he die? Can he die? Can he get away? Yes, he gets away. Calculated or pure luck? I don't know. Maybe you know. Let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, such a messy and fiesta fight. Uh, which was kind of too much gambling situation from the Gondor player. The last play from Gandalf was extremely uh, risky. And this kind of stuff you don't need. But in the meantime, look at the minimap. You know, Mordor was making a move. But imagine the Eagles taking care of these trolls. They would be a much wiser and greater choice. Now they will go again. They will try to actually try, you know, to destroy the Gondor castle. Maybe they can do that. Gandalf has to rotate. Gandalf is level 8, by the way. So he's like... I mean, once again, guys, Mordor is a matchup for Gondor or for Gandalf, which kind of doesn't make... Uh, how can I say? The War of Power doesn't have too much impact in this matchup. Because trolls, they are quite resistant against the magical damage. And War of Power is going to be only able to knock them down and back, but they won't die from it. So the only thing you can kill are either orcs or combos. That's it. And the eagles, are, I mean, the elves are gonna just feed. Oh, be, be careful. Be careful, Gandalf. Gandalf! Okay, the shield power is gonna save today. Quite risky, as you can see. The trolls are hitting like a truck. Extremely hard. And did I miss something? Do, do you guys see the minimap now at the bottom left side of your screen? Do you see how much settlement and how much map control Mordor was able to gain during the fight? That's called macro and multitasking. And that's the key to victory in RTS games. While you do something, do something else you know so your opening has to be focused on one thing he had to focus on the fight to keep his Gandalf protected to actually try to get away with Faramir summon the eagles to try to kill the uh, trolls and you could use I mean he did a great job using this time to pressure the map get some settlements back and this way you can eventually get stronger and more rich now all of a sudden we have 4000 plus for the first time ever actually for the model player and he might slowly but surely be able to save up for the Witch King, finally, for the first time. I mean, we haven't seen a Nazgul or a Witch King all game, and this game actually lasts a while. Very interesting Gond uh, Mortal gameplay, definitely. This Gondor is a little bit too scared. I mean, makes kind of sense because he got kind of slaughtered every time he went for the attack. But maybe try to coordinate your attack a little bit better. Like, once again, split up a little bit. Put here an archer, here an archer. Uh, also, split up your trebuchet. Get Boromir. Even if Boromir dies, doesn't make any difference. But Boromir is at least able to disable the trolls for a, for a couple of seconds. Okay, so the Witch King, ladies and gentlemen, is being recruited. Now the leader of the Nine. The right hand of Sauron, the Dark Lord. 10 power points away from getting the Balrog summon unlocked. And Gondor needs 8 power points from his army of the dead. So army of the dead and Balrog, both of them, are very impactful abilities, as you guys know. And they are able to win you the game. Especially army of the dead in a situation like that in which you kill the major primary army from Mordor. What can he do then? Nothing, you know? Then you just run it down. Okay, that's a very risky move. Because at the statue here behind, you will have 100% more da damage output. Then you also place one of them inside the outpost. Then it's going to be kind of tough to, you know, target it. And rangers, once again, are a neutral counter. Uh, like a great counter to the mountain trolls. To any monster. To Mumma kills, to Nazgul, to Witch King and everything else. Okay, Witch King is committing. Nice one. He was able to take down. The rangers should be rotating now. Lightning Sword will be missed on the Witch King. Great rotation with the Witch King. Now we are talking. Guys, guys, guys. I have Sauron, Drummer Troll, Darkness, and Witch King. Are you kidding me? That's a lot of leadership. Farami is actually getting level 5. But once again, clumped army. Why are you clumped like this? I don't get it. He's focusing down the Witch King, but Mordor is paying attention. Gandalf is running for his life. The combos are running it down. The trebuchet are gone. It means they can do whatever they want. They will be slaughtering the rangers. 
Look at the animations. Look, you know, they are having so much leadership that they are not glowing anymore. They are shining bright like a diamond. That's what they are doing. Paramiya, I don't know how many times he has been killed in this game. And four power points got collected during the battle of the outpost at the bottom left around the beautiful map, Forts of Aizen. And now we got ourselves a game because the problem here for the Gondor player is that he was actually building the archer range offensively. That means he has no archer range inside the castle. He's building it now, but it's gonna be only level one. And you will not get you will not get the chance to recruit the rangers until you get four of them recruited to get your archer range to level two. And that again will cost you money, but most importantly, time. And time is a luxus a Gondor player doesn't have. Luckily, and the good thing about this situation is he has now finally the Eagle Summon Allies available. He should not use it around the bottom right side because we have seen what this combos can do to the Eagles. So ideally, you want to use it and kill this army eventually. You want to, at this point, as Gondor, oh, you want to collect power points, fish power points to get to the power spike of the army of the dead as soon as possible because I believe that this army can only be killed with the army of the dead there is no other way so just go all out summon elves summon you know eagles try to get as much collected before mordor decides to end this game once and for all the siege force is coming up now and that will give mordor the chance to actually recruit some catapults for himself for the siege of the gondor castle reminds me a little bit to the film in which you know mordor was marching to the Minas Tirith in the Lord of the Rings in the Return of the King, uh, you know, and Minas Tirith was trying to defend. The only difference is that's the same army of Mordor, but a weaker defense of Gondor. So he's splitting up his trebuchet. The problem here is that he has not enough protection for the trebuchet. That means the Witch King can just fly in when Gandalf is not nearby and take them out one by one. Archers at the ready. Archers at the ready. So why are you not summoning i don't understand like seriously guys i don't understand why he's holding the witch king uh, the the eagles i mean okay eagles have a long cooldown uh, but it's the perfect opportunity like you won't be able to summon them anywhere else this army is gonna one shot the eagles so one archer only two archers put them on the wall maybe <laughs> Guys, when I used them, when I first time played Battle for Middle of One, kind of online and also skirmishes, I used to just, you know, put arches on top of the wall. And I will explain you guys, or I will tell you the very first online gaming experience I had while playing Battle for Middle of One online many, many, many years ago, before the servers got shut down. <clears throat> I can't even talk, sorry for my voice. Um, I used to pick Rohan and build nothing no peasants don't, don't even draft them don't give them any weapons i was just building farms until i have 3000 for legolas it was the play style you know in my, my very very first game in the online scene and i remember i was finally able to recruit him i was happy i was like okay i did it so i will now win i have a very strong hero on the field and i was i didn't even know until then that i'm actually against a mortar so i sent him forward and there was a singular mountain troll who was running me legit down First of all, killing my Legolas, <laughs> then killing my gate and finishing the game with one single mountain troll. And it was embarrassing. That's why I will never forget about this. And, you know, why I'm telling you that is because you can, only, you can always get better. Oh my goodness. Hit them. Hit them there. How clumped they are. What are these eagles doing? Look how much damage they took for no reason. That's, that's bad. Five power points still. That's a lot. And you don't want to lose your castle. Because the outpost, all alone is not going to be able to save you the game. Mordor is three and a half power points only away from the demon of the ancient world. The Balrog of Morgoth. Oh my goodness, boys. What a game, man. I don't know what to say. I mean, you need to be patient. And I believe this guy, the Mordor player, Vito, has found the inner peace. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what is required to be able to play this like that. Like, be patient, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's a waiting game, you know, it's a built-up game. He was patiently, actually, just sitting in his castle and waiting and waiting and waiting to be ready to make a move. You need to have an inner peace to do stuff like that. Drama trolls are being sent forward. Beautiful catapult shots, though, and Gondor is getting lots of power points collected. That's a very risky move from the Witch King, but luckily Gandalf is not around. Is Gandalf around? Is he gonna die? Yeah, he's gonna die. Gandalf has been... 
Um, I mean, Farami just came out, right? The trolls are actually charging in too badly. He might... Oh, that's a bad fight to take. Like, I can understand the reasoning because trebuchet are annoying to deal with. Um, that's why he wanted to send in the Witch King. But Witch King is too valuable to lose easily like that. And this is going to abort the entire mission of Mordor. He cannot go any further, further, you know what I'm saying? It's like Aragorn, you know, like saying to the Corsairs, you shall not enter Gondor. You and which army? This trebuchet army. Actually, one of them is only is only remaining on the field. So Gondor has to try to take down um, take down this beautiful shot. Holy guacamole! The Nazgul is on the field. The good thing for Mordor player Vito is that the Witch King and also the Nazgul, when they die, you can revive them for free. However, that will take you lots of time to get them back on the menu. And look at this. I believe the mission of this Mordor player is actually to turn this Gondor castle into more like a Mordor or Isengard castle by breaking legit throughout the entire, every single piece of these walls. And two power points away from the army of the dead. But uh, Mordor is only one and a half power points. And just take a look into the minimap in the meantime. So all of a sudden, we see more green than blue. And this is going to be even greater for Mordor because now he has a second Nazgul and the Witch King is already getting revived. So in, a, in, a, in about a minute, the Mordor player will have three flying heroes up on the field. Which, oh my, what is Gandalf doing? Me friends here. Oh man. The Nazgul and the Trolls are revenging the Witch King. This side. They actually knocked them down. And ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the demon of the ancient world? Regardless if you are or not, but I believe we will get the chance to see him now. The animation from his summon is something else. Like, I love the design of the... I mean, guys, Battle for Middle-earth is the most unique RTS game ever. Like, every RTS game, as you guys know, following the principle of rock, paper, scissors. But this game has, like, a unique part, multiple unique parts, heroes, powerpoints, and the lore of Middle-earth. It's just... I don't know, man. This game doesn't get the love it deserves. I wish we would have more active players. And with the new launcher we have released a couple of days ago, you can download this game super easily with clicking one single button. The castle has been taken down. Gondor is stalling. He has a lot of money and almost the power points he needs. So he has finally the power points he needs, but can he do something here? He's gonna just summon it and YOLO. Balrog has still some time, but not much. Army of the Dead will be summoned. Uh, Gross is summoning it. I believe he's just trying to kill some units because I don't think that even Army of the Dead can turn this game around uh, because the Eagles cannot be targeted by the Army of the Dead. So unless the, unless the Nazgul is at attacking the Army of the Dead, which, by the way, is going to be a suicide command. Oh, oh, okay. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, don't attack the Army of the Dead. It will hurt you. You might be forced to summon the Eagles defensively. Gandalf is getting revived. And actually, Gondor player was like, okay, I will just buy the castle back, huh? What? <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't expect that. I mean, that's only possible because of the money he had. But the money is gone now. So you see, all of a sudden, he has no money. Army of the Red is on cooldown. Balrog is on cooldown. But most importantly, Gandalf is dead. And the Witch King is coming now, boys. Witch King is like... Gandalf will never be able to join. And if you kill the Citadel, that's better than... Or the Eagles will be summoned defense. That's already a win-win situation because now... Run. Fly, you fool, as Gandalf would like to see. The combos, shoot at them. Okay. Darkness plus I plus Witch King. Watch this. Watch this, boys. You see the damage, the burst? Dude, what's that? He has been used on his Gondor Knights. Watch this. And they hit... Oh, he's killing his own combos, isn't he? Oh, but the Eagles, like, I'm telling you guys, one single archer from this battalion, like, it's a level 9 orc battalion, orc, you know, orc archer combination, right? One single archer with this much leadership, without even the drama troll being nearby, nearly one-shotting an eagle. That's how important the leadership system in Battle for Middle-earth is. And that's why it's always quality over quantity. You, should, you rather should have a one single unit with insane amount of leadership, than having 10 units without leadership. That's how important this is. So the commitment now against the castle. This one has only one single tower. The second tower is coming up. But I believe that's not going to be enough to save the day. Uh, the trolls are almost immune to the damage now. Because of darkness. In drama troll. In the witch king. So they are literally taking no damage. From the normal regular towers. 
Gandalf is on the field again? Question mark. Yeah, Gandalf is back on the menu. But what can Gandalf do against that? Like, he's here on his Shadow Facts. The last man standing, literally. Does he have any other units? Yeah, he has one ranger inside the Citadel. That's it. That's all he got. Gandalf versus the world. Can he do it? What is this fiesta? What a game, dude. dude I, I gotta be honest, guys. I was not expecting this game to end like this. Because it was looking so great for Gondor. And you can see that the micro is extremely important in those kind of clashes against the trolls. Like, there are monsters you need to deal with, right? And to be fair, and to be kind of completely honest with you guys, it's hard but for Gondor because Gondor lacks of damage leadership. So the only way you can get damage leadership with Gondor is... Oh, nice lightning sword. Is when you get Boromir level 4. Um, but he never went for Boromir. He never tried to get Boromir level 4. And when it comes to deal with trolls, Mumakirs, ants, or anything that can actually deal crazy amount of damage to you, uh, armor leadership is not nearly as important and it's impactful as actually the damage leadership. Here it's about bursting. You need to burst them before they can burst you. But Gondor lacks of damage leadership. That's the problem. If this would be Rohan with Glorious Charge, with Elma leadership, with Aragon leadership, all of that has actually damage leadership included. Aragon gives you 50% more damage. You know, Elma gives you 60 for the for the horses. And then Theoden gives you 50. So in total, you would have 160% command, 160 increased you know, damage leadership, which means your Rohirrim Arches would hit like a truck. While they are mobile to hit and run, it would be a full different story. But Gondor lacks of the damage boost to take down these trolls fast enough. That's why you need to micro. That's why you need to use your number advantage. Oh my goodness. Look at this picture, boys. Looks like... Uh, build me an army worthy of Mordor. And the last outpost is going to be slain. And that's going to be the end of Gondor. Gandalf dies with Gondor. And GG, well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.